Hello everyone, I'm going to give you a quick tutorial on my Chrome extension resource override. This extension is great for debugging a live site with live sites with uh, minified code. Um, you can also test out you know your your bug fixes without having to set up a dev environment or push your code to the the live site to test it. Um, or just other general hackery with other websites. Um, so here it is. Uh, the first thing you'll see is this tab URL. And this tab URL holds rules that you can create, so just to show you. And you can add other tab groups, and they have their own rules as well. Um, but uh, basically what's important is that the tab URL will only apply the rules under it if what you put in here matches your actual tab URL. Uh, that This is a way to namespace things so that you don't, you know, have crazy rules being applied to... Uh, you know your other general browsing tabs um, so as you can see it uses there's a star here this means match anything as you might guess uh, th this is kind of a special globbing syntax syntax it's not really uh, anything too complicated uh, it's not a regular expression it's just you know your simple glob so for example, if I if I type something like this, star local, this means uh, match anything, then require that you see local somewhere, and then match anything again. Uh, you know, if I were to take off this end star, that means that the URL must end in local. Um, in my case, uh, I just want to make sure that the URL has the word local somewhere in it, so it'll match that guy right there. Um, so okay, and then uh, I'll explain a little bit more about the star globbing in a minute here. Uh, first, I'm just going to show you the web rule. The web rule takes a match URL with the same globbing rules, and it will uh, take any resource that it matches and, and redirect it to the URL that you put here. Uh, so this is great for uh, taking all of the resources on a, on a production site, like all of the JS files, and then redirecting them to your development versions. Uh, so that way you can quickly uh, basically test out your development versions on the live site. So, for example, say I were to use something like uh, star slash JS, oops, JS slash star. Um, this will match all the JS files on this website. And uh, I can go ahead and put HTTP slash slash localhost or 8080 uh, slash star. Oh, actually, I'm going to put two stars here, and I'll tell you why in a minute. I'm going to put two stars there. Um, take off that JS. So what's happening here is um, it'll match everything as greedily as it can and whatever it matches it'll store it in this star then it will require that it sees a JS somewhere in the URL and then um, it will uh, then try and greedily capture as much as it can and store that in this double star which is like a, a different variable and I'm using that variable right here and it unravels that to build the final URL that it redirects to um, you can use as many stars as you want to create a new kind of a scope or variable. Um, you're not re you're not limited to any number, and uh, being able to store parts of the URLs in these star variables allows you to do interesting things like swap directory names, like uh, reorder the directory names, do different things like that, throw away parts of the URL by not using a variable in the result URL. Uh, just interesting things to help you kind of get the exact match that you want. Um, so I'm going to turn that off for now. Uh, I'm going to add a, another. I'm going to add this file rule. A file rule is uh, the match URL is the exact same as the web rules match. You can just match anything you want. In this case, I'm going to match controller.js. And uh, you can instead of having to set up a server to redirect to your dev environment files, if you just want to test something out really fast, you can just add, use a file rule, match something, edit the file. Here's the file editor. Load, you know, load a resource from this drop down, say controller.js. And since it's on the production side, it's minified. 
uh, you can use the beautify JS button. You know, you know, maybe find something like uh, I don't know, you know, item, or, you know, whatever. You know, it's pretty useful uh, for finding things and editing code. And then uh, when you're ready, um, you know, you can make some edits. And then um, you're able to save that and then test it right away by reloading the page. And uh, there you go. So that's a very easy and fast way to test out changes on a production site. Um, so I'm going to get out of that. Uh, an inject rule is very similar to a file rule. Uh, the only difference is, is it's, not, it's not taking over, it's not replacing a resource that you specify. It's just injecting it, as you might guess. So you can do JS or CSS into the head of the body. And just to show you, um, you know, foo, save. And uh, doesn't need a file name, that's optional. But yeah, if I reload, foo. So yeah, I'm just going to show you how, how this works. Again, it's going to match all the JS files and redirect it to localhost 8080. Um, I'm going to pull up my server here. CDJS, start the server on port 8080. And uh, if I reload the page now, um, if I look at my server, uh, it's getting hit for all the JS files. And, um, you know, if I bring up my editor here, uh, I already had it edited in here, but, you know, I can change things on my local. Uh, dev environment with my editor of choice and uh, you know save it test it it works so that's basically the gist of this extension uh, you know I, I hope that this helps you debug uh, your site and uh, save a lot of headache and a lot of time because it certainly has for me uh, just search resource override on Google to find it it's the first link and uh, if you want to contribute, uh, you can view the GitHub page, which there's a link to on the bottom of the extension page. And feel free to, you know, send me a message, contribute, whatever. I'd be happy to get feedback. And, uh, yeah. So thank you, and I hope this helps, and have a nice day.